is a state of mind. You are listening to the Buckeye Show. Gets set, gets the snap, drops it, his 23, passes on the right side, ball in the air for Reimers, tipped away and intercepted. Ohio State's got the ball being returned by Malik Hooker. Down the left side of the Nebraska 25, weaves his way to the 20. Hooker to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, and he's going to score again. Malik Hooker picks it off, his fifth pick, his second score. There is a penalty flag down, but Ohio State with another interception, and for the moment, he would appear a defensive score. And this guy was one of the greats. You talk about defensive playmaking, ball hawking, running the ball back for touchdowns, pick sixes. Malik Hooker, an Ohio State safety great and a Dallas Cowboy. He's on the Buckeyes show on the Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems Fan Guest Hotline. Malik, thanks for doing it, man. How's everything going out there in the Big D? Oh, it's going great right now. You know, we're kind of in the mix of get starting OTAs next week, so everything is going great right now. It's never a dull moment being a member of the mm-hmm. Dallas Cowboys, right, Malik? Oh, uh, yeah, never, never. <laughs> you got Zeke back in the building, huh? Yeah, yeah, man, it's been great. You know, obviously, you know, when Zeke was here for the uh, few years I've been around, man, he's been the energy in the building. You know, he always has a smile on his face. And it's funny because it kind of reminds me of the O State days. You know, everybody, you know, the bond of the brotherhood that you build in the locker room. And it's the same thing. You know, he comes in there, he goofs off. But at the same time, you know, Zeke, like everybody else knows, and once he gets in between those lines, it's all work. So, you know, that's one of the competitors that you'll love to have on your team. You know, I know we're grateful to have him back. And, you know, I love him like a brother, so I'm glad to have him back. And I can't wait to see, you know, what else he has in the tank these next few years. Because last year, you know, people were saying he was falling off the year before or whatever it was. And last year to me, you know, he looked great as if, you know, he was coming out, you know, the early years from Ohio State. So, you know, I'm looking forward to see what he has left in the tank and, you know, the accomplishments he has down the road still. Malik, is he still doing the same locker room answer? <laughs> We heard that. that. They, McCarthy said he's slapping these 60 year old butts, man. That, didn't he say that? <laughs> he's, he's still doing that, Malik. Yeah, man. That's Zeke, man. That's how, that's how he gets his offensive guys going, man. I, you know, defensive guys, you know, we're a little more serious, but, man, that's how he gets his guys going. And, uh, you know, from what McCarthy, Coach McCarthy says, you know, they love it. I, I mean, you know, it's a little different, but they love it. And, you know, like I said, man, that's just Zeke, man. You know, he's a big kid at heart, but, you know, like I said, he's able to, you know, put that aside and become a professional when he needs to as well. Malik, now, with Indianapolis, you know, you went through some injuries. You was able to go first round. Obviously, things mm-hmm. didn't go the way to plan. You get to Dallas, and, man, I tell you, I've watched your game go from Indianapolis to where it's at now. You know, you become mm-hmm. more of a complete safety, just being able to be in the box, re- making the right reads, shooting gaps, still mm-hmm. getting picks. What's going into that? How were you able to develop your game and become this complete safety? Uh, I'll say just really locking in and then tuning with myself and, you know, my routine and stuff like that. Because, you know, like I know, Travis, you know, your first couple years in the league, you know, you have a routine from college, but it's different in a sense, you know, going to the NFL because you have, you know, more free time and, you know, at this point of year, my age, you know, I got a family and stuff like that. So you got to be able to balance all those things while still, you know, like you said, trying to become the best you can be on the field. So for me, man, I just, you know, been following the routine. You know, I got a great, you know, support system, you know, on the field and obviously off the field as well, you know, from my family to just the training staff and stuff like that that I've been working with in Dallas and, Man, it's been special. You know, we built like a, a bond, like we're family. So, you know, we go in and we approach it that day every day. You know, we go in there, we try to get 1% better, whether it be, you know, something simple as far as, you know, just dynamics or, you know, whether it's a strength day. So I feel like that's kind of what's been the difference for my, you know, involvement, you know, being able to find that routine that fits exactly what's been making me be able to stay healthy and being able to go out there and still perform at a high level. So it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> It's just so cool. It really is. Malik Hooker is with us, guys. Mm-hmm. Safety for the Dallas Cowboys, and we, you know, we've talked about you and you know the the type of player that you were at Ohio State. We all just we all knew we knew in our hearts you were going to be great in the NFL. And you get some injuries, some things don't don't work out in that first spot. But you're only 28 years old, and you're you yeah. know going into year four with the Dallas Cowboys, and it's cool. And I want you to know, Tyvis never says this, but he admitted last segment that you are the better safety than him, and that's just cool for <laughs> him to say because he never says that, even though we know you are obviously. But Whoa. him saying. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Man, <laughs> you know, you know, that's my guy, man. It's funny because, you know, uh, obviously, you know, stuff comes back around because once I ended up, I want to say my first year in Dallas, I want to say Tyvis ended up coming on the team. And, you know, we obviously chopped it up or something like that. And, you know, going through the Ohio State days, 
Tyrus was one of my role models. You know, that was one of the guys who came in and kind of taught me how to go about the program and, you know, how to be able to balance out student athletics and going to class and stuff like that. Because, I mean, you know, guys, he's still the same guy that he was back then. You know, he oh, tries yeah. to do everything right. <laughs> he tries to do everything right by the book. He's a clown 95% of the time. <laughs> Look at but, that smile. Look at but, him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Malik? But, man, he, been, yeah. Going, going, uh, going back to uh, – your your college days. Now, I, I always mm-hmm. tell people that you know when you first got here, you was you was raw. You know, you was raw. We had mm-hmm. everybody work with you. Vine played a tremendous part of you know those Saturday workouts. We'd all come up there and drill, and you know we ended up yeah. you ended up making a bunch of plays towards the end of your sophomore season. I, mm-hmm. I always tell everybody that you and Coach Ash did not necessarily see eye to eye. Okay, <laughs> I just yeah, I tell it yeah. I tell it like it is. Y'all didn't see eye to eye. It was times where you thought about transferring out and all of those things, but you stuck mm-hmm. here and you ended up getting Greg Schiano as your your safeties coach. What was it about mm-hmm. him that helped you become the better player that you became? Uh, I'll say it's just the belief, you know, like any, uh, you know, any athlete, once you go out there, you know, obviously you get picked for a reason and, you know, you believe in yourself. And I mean, that takes you a, a certain extent, but when you have that coach, that's kind of pushing you behind and kind of letting you know, like, you know, you're either going in the right direction or, you know, tough love on you when you're messing up or stuff like that. You know, that's kind of the bond me and Coach Shiano had, you know, from when he stepped, you know, first day on campus, he came and introduced himself to me and, you know, obviously you hear the comparison and stuff. You know, he was saying to Ed Reed and all that. And it was just like, you know, just the way he came and introduced ourselves and how we talked about football. That was probably the least of what we talked about. You know, we talked more about outside life and stuff like that. That gave me that comfortability to wanting to go out there and lay my, you know, my body on the line and go out there and perform how I knew I could and how he knew I could without him even, you know, he it was his first year in, so he didn't know me from a can of paint, mm. <laughs> but he had all the belief in the world from me from, you know, day day one he stepped on campus. So, you know, that just was that much special. You know, when you got that bond with your position coach or, you know, your head coach and they have that belief in you and able to speak that confidence into you, it makes it that much easier on Saturdays and Sundays, honestly. Malik, we gave you the play-by-play treatment because you're so great, and there's so many great plays to choose from mm-hmm. when you started the interview. And it was the Denzel Ward got the tip drill for you against Nebraska. Yeah. You were Johnny <laughs> on the spot and a great run back. There were so many plays, seven picks, three pick sixes in that great 2016 season. It seems like you had 12 picks and six run backs. <laughs> Is there a specific uh-huh. play that you remember the most? Uh, Man, honestly, man, that year was so fun. Like, it wasn't really the playing. Like, it was really just the moments of being with, you know, that group of guys that I was with. Because most of the guys that I was playing with at that time, other than Denzel, was guys that kind of came in around my uh, class, you know. So it was Gary on, who was a year older than me, Marshawn, uh, Dame Webb, and then obviously Denzel and those guys. Like, Denzel and was younger than me, but all the other guys was around my age group. So it was like we went through, you know, the mat drills and stuff as freshmen and, all those things. And it was like, man, just the camaraderie of Sam Marshawn, you know, get his interceptions and running his picks back. And then, you know, hearing the conversations of him being a top 10 or top 15 pick. And Denzel, you know, him being considered, I guess at that time, you know, they was calling him a backup and him still having the praise to be able to be in the mentions of a top 10 pick or whatever the case was and him doing it. You know, that just speaks volume on, you know, not just the program, but, you know, I guess you could say the brotherhood too, because it ain't like, and yeah, the program helps, you know, most of the guys, you know, you fill out weight wise and obviously learn the steps to being a professional. But, you know, I feel like all the stuff that we built off the field, you know, the family stuff and the going through the mat drills and the days like Tyler said, me wanting to quit and those guys, you know, staying with me and working with me. Like those are the moments that I remember more so mm-hmm. than, you know, the interceptions and stuff. Malik, we get you out here on this one. Last question. <laughs> Two things. One, do you know they don't do St. Valentine's Day in the Harley Davidson anymore? It's unbelievable. Oh, uh, listen, man, listen. They, I, all that work they didn't put me through, and then all that hell, listen, they need to bring it back. <laughs> that's how I feel. Honestly, man, maybe maybe that's what we're missing right now, you know, because we ain't, we ain't been performing how Ohio State does these last couple of years, you know. 
And maybe that's what we're missing. We might need to throw that that tough love, you know, that mad drills that gets the calluses on your hands and stuff like that back in there. Well, I tell you, they are they can't do it anymore. I guess it's a new rule that they can't do it anymore. But they are doing a bunch of mad drills. What do you expect to see from the Buckeyes this year? You know, things hasn't been great around here the past three years, but obviously mm-hmm. through transfer portal, through recruiting, they have a really stacked roster. What do you think we ex- you expect <clears throat> to see from them this year? Uh, I mean, I expect none less. Like, I look forward to it because, you know, there's a lot of guys from Team Up North here. You know, we got Jay Lou, yeah. you know, Mozzie and those guys. So, you know, I expect none less than, you know, from what y'all taught me from when I came in, you know, the, the legacy and, you know, the brotherhood. And, like I said, the stuff that was put there and laid down foundation-wise before we got there. Like, people think, you know, you just go to a Ohio State and it's just the big names. You know, it's just the Braxtons and, you know, guys like that that show up on the scene and they just become great. But, for me, like, I, like it's the work, you know, that you put in throughout the offseason and stuff that kind of builds that in-season form. Like, you know, I remember the play from our year when JT got the first down when they were saying, <laughs> when they were saying he didn't get it yeah. when we played Team Up North. Yeah. I feel like, you know, those mad drills and stuff like that, I mean, they don't do them no more, but I feel like those moments is what prepared us for those times. You know, we needed that first down and stuff like that. So, you know, like I said, I mean – Hopefully we bring back, you know, that silver bullets defense that everybody was worried about and talking about, you know, because that's always been from what I've been understanding since I've been there and been wanting to go to Ohio State, you know, the thing to talk about. So I'm looking forward to seeing the silver bulls come out there. Obviously, I know the offense is always, you know, electrifying and they always got some great receivers and everything, but I'm just kind of looking forward to seeing, you know, that one playmaker, those few guys on the defense that kind of separate themselves that lets you know, like, you know, it's silver bullets is back in. We know this is something that we're we're looking to be reckoned with for these next few years. Malik Hooker of the Dallas Cowboys, thank you so much for doing it. One of the most skilled DBs we ever had come through Ohio State here. Got the game against the Browns coming up. You'll beat Tyvis' Browns, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate well, you it. You better be there too, man. You oh, I'll be, be there. there I will me, be man. in the building for sure. <laughs> Malik, thanks a lot. Browns jersey, though. Uh, can't, can't promise you that. What'd you say, What'd you say they, there, Malik? The, the Browns are paying me, Malik. I said, I said, man, he can come to the game. I, I just, he at least got to wear Ohio State jersey, so he just know he's neutral for that game. Gotcha, gotcha, <laughs> absolutely, man. Malik, thanks a lot, man. Best of luck this season. Oh, I appreciate you guys for having me on there. Thank you. No doubt about it. That was awesome. That was cool. Hey.